all blend our voices to sing together from our hymn book, CGS, hymn number 357, to begin with. You are welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful Lord's Day. May the Lord bless you for coming round to worship God with us. We are looking up to the Lord just as that Greek woman did as we studied this morning. That even if we have some people here that haven't got that faith, that God will give it to us. And the purpose of our coming, just as she came and she was blessed, we are also going to be blessed in Jesus' name. We would like to extend a a, a warm welcome to our internet audience, wherever you are located as well. We pray that the Lord who is here with us to bless us, we bless you too. We have just had a wonderful study this morning about faith in God. And when we have faith in God, irrespective of the obstacles on our way, when we come to the Lord, he will answer our prayers. And um, we pray that that same God will be with you wherever you are. Meanwhile, I'd like to appreciate the effort of our choir and orchestra, the organ and piano um, duet that started the service off. Then never give up by the choir and then that lovely duet and admonition, have faith in God. And it's our turn to sing together beginning with hymn number 357. We are taking verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4 after the introduction. two choruses now, beginning again. We have two choruses to sing together. The first one is going to be number 69. That is why we are always excited when we hear about Jesus' second coming, because we know he's taking us to a happy place. Heaven is a happy Thank you. 
21. Chorus number 21. If it is a happy place, certainly we want to shout the glad tidings. And before we get there, we know Jesus will come first. Amen. Jesus is coming, is coming again. We take that chorus twice. Jesus is coming. Three hundred and seventy one will be our next song. Three seven one. song and then we have congregational prayer and that is going to be 358. We're going to stand up to sing at the end of which the banji will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. We stand up to sing verses 1, 2 and 4. Shall we stand please? <laughs> Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. We thank you for bringing us to church today. Amen. Thank you for sparing our lives throughout the week. Amen. Thank you for your protection over us. Amen. Thank you for just being there for us, O oh Lord. Yes. This morning, O oh Lord, we just thank you for teaching us in Sunday school for breaking down your word, for increasing our faith, for increasing our anticipation for everything that you have for us this morning. Lord, bless us. Lord, just help this day to be a day that will reconcile with heaven, that we have surely gone home blessed. There are many people that have not been able to come. They may be watching over the internet, Lord. They may be sick in one way or the other. Lord, let your healing power touch them. Amen. Uh, many of our folks, some are down. Lord, not even this may not be physical sickness, but mentally they are discouraged, depressed in one way or the other. Lord, as the word comes out today, lift them up. Amen. Rekindle hope. Amen. Every kind of um, spirit that is bringing them down, Lord, use your word to take them out of the dungeon of despair. Amen. Today, oh Lord, let it be another day that record souls in heaven. Yeah. Save today. Yeah. Sanctify yeah. today. Yeah. Baptize today. Yeah. When the preacher comes out to dish out this word, Lord, give him the unction from above. Yeah. Let this word just go straight into our hearts yeah. and, and help it to yield fruit. Yeah. That little bird or little distraction that wants to take the word out, that won't let it have fruit, that won't let it germinate, that won't let it develop. We pray, oh Lord, from the four corners of this church, banish that spirit now. Yeah. May we be fully focused for the blessing of today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Bible reading for our service this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, and we'll be reading from verse 19 to verse 31. Luke 16, from verse 19 to verse 31. 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. When you are troubled and the whole world seems wrong, he cares when the trials try to silence your song. He cares when you are lonely, though you love. With the drone, Jesus cares. He cares when you stumble in the heat of the day. He cares. When you are burdened and too weary to pray, He cares when you fail Him, when your feet go astray. He cares when your heart is. Take him your money, but Jesus. 
the stricken and your strength starts to wane. He cares when you tremble with a fever in the pain. He cares when you struggle, but the work seems in vain. Jesus cares. Yes, Jesus cares. He cares when your heart is. So take. Please turn your Bible with me to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25. We read 31 to 34. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth a sheep from the goat. 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. Thank God for this wonderful opportunity I have to be with, with you this morning again. May the Almighty Father, the power of Holy Spirit, come down Amen. and bless our service today. Amen. Today, being November 5, the first Sunday in this new month, if we look back, Successfully, we have passed through 10 months. Amen. The remaining two months, by the grace of God, we will see the end of this year. Amen. And if Jesus should tarry, yeah. we are going to see many more years. Amen. In Romans 8, part of 31, it says, If God be with us, right. who can be against us? No one. No one. Why? Because one in the Lord is a majority. Oh, yes. Jesus is always with us, whether we gather like this. Also in Psalm 16, verse 6, the Bible says that the lines are falling on our side in pleasant places. Yea, we have goodly heritage. We are fortunate to have this good heritage. What are these heritage that we can mention? Just a few. Sound doctrine of apostolic faith. May God keep it for us. The doctrine of holy worship yeah. and holy living. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of monast benches. Yes. May God keep them for us. Amen. The doctrine of prayer room, yeah. where we call down the power of God yeah. before all our scheduled meetings. Yeah. Lord, please keep it for us. Amen. And finally, the doctrine of apostolic, the faith of the apostles. Yeah. That, that's why we are apostolic faith. Yeah. This faith, may God continue to keep us there Amen. and increase the faith for us. Amen. This last week, I was thrilled when I came to the Bible study to see the topic being discussed, living holy. Yes. Holiness in beliefs yeah. and values. Right. This is wonderful. This is exactly confirming that what we preach is what we teach. Amen. What we teach 
is what we preach. And that's the life we live. May continue to keep us and help us to continue to remain in this gospel. Now, we want to consider few, I mean, the topic this morning is the torment of eternal separation. The torment of eternal separation. May you not experience it. And the purpose of this message is that we should not experience it at all in any form or shape. And God, in his infinite mercy, wants to hasten our readiness for that great spectacular event that is coming in the world very soon. That event has never happened before. And it's not going to happen again. It's only once. So it is then, therefore, for us, important for us to be ready. Because once we miss it, there's no second chance. The people of God will be raptured up and stay with the Lord in the bliss. Why those who are left behind, we have to go through the great tribulation, the period of the Antichrist. May you not experience it. Amen. Amen. This is why God is sending this message to us today. So that we hear from time to time that we need to be ready. But if we don't remind ourselves very often, the tendency is that we sleep. May we not sleep. Amen. Amen. What preparation are you making? We just have to be ready. Because there's no second chance. The great tribulation is going to be in this world. In our key, the opening text we just read now, talking about Jesus Christ himself speaking here in that Matthew 25, that there's going to be a great separation. Those who are saved are regarded as the sheep who will be on the right hand side. But the unsaved will be on the left hand side. And there's no more hope for those people who will be on the left hand side. And this is why we want us to really understand what we are talking about. We're talking of separation, that eternal separation. May we not experience it. May we not be candidates of hell. As you have heard from the scripture reading, that man was there, and he was praying too late. May you not pray too late. Separation. What exactly do we mean by separation? It's a simple word, but pregnant with meaning. There are two types of separation, basically. Yeah. One is temporary, while the other one is permanent. Right. We can say, on the other hand, that the temporary one is physical, while the permanent one is spiritual. Mm-hmm. This first one, the physical one, the temporary one, is in, the, is in God's system of creation. Yes. But the permanent one, which is this spiritual one, was the device of Satan. You know, when God creates the world, if he does not allow for temporary separation, Adam will not have left Eve. And the time, this very short time, he was away, Satan struck and took advantage, and that's what he does. May God deliver us. Amen. Temporary separation. I think we need to know it more. Even though it's in God's system, we don't want it. As human beings, nobody wants separation. But it's a necessary evil. It will come. So when we know all these devices, we'll be able to prepare. Let's look into a few examples of separation that we go through, that we have. If a daughter is reaching a marriageable age, maybe after the university age and school, now 
The mother, the parents will be praying for this lady, this girl, to bring the bone of the bone and flesh of her flesh. Mm -hmm. And the day she brings the person she wants to marry, the date is fixed. That very night, when she will be leaving for her husband's home, they call it Bachelor's of Spiritual Night. You see the mother in the corner, wiping her face, screaming. What's the problem? Because of that temporary separation she was going to have with her daughter. They have been together all along. But because that daughter is going to leave that home for another place, yes. the mother doesn't want it. And this is the one that was been praying for the girl to get married. You see, that is the irony of this life. Another one that we can easily understand is when you have husband and wife, they are gainfully employed. And along the line, the husband just come back one day and said, oh, my dear, you know what? I've got a letter of transfer. I've been going to Coventry to work in that office at least for six months. After some time, they bring me back. They want me to go and organize that place. They are giving me, I mean, the salary before was X, Y. Now I'm going to get X, Y, Z. And not many amenities. The wife will pause. She will not be able to say, ah, congratulations. <laughs> Why? Because of that temporary separation. She doesn't want it. Even for good. Another one we can understand. A little baby of just about three months. If it's a beautiful girl or a handsome boy, oh, you want to cuddle him or her? The moment you want to take that baby from the mother, you are looking for trouble. The baby cannot talk, but she understands. She doesn't want that separation. May God deliver us. Amen. The list continues on and on. We have many that people don't want, but it will necessarily come. Yeah. Separation. May God deliver us. Amen. Then you have another one, which is um, when you have A toddler, a toddler, a boy of about two year, two, a boy again, two or three years. The very day he's going to start the school. Mm. Yeah. That's going to be the longest day for that mother. <laughs> she will take a daughter, a boy or a daughter, a son or daughter to the school, to the nursery school. They will tell her, come back by 12 o'clock and pick your daughter. I'm telling you, when it's about quarter past 11, <laughs> her clock is no longer reliable. She wants to cross-check. Sister Grace, please, what's your time? Sister Grace will say, ah, it's quarter past 11. Ah, it's the same thing with my time. <laughs> Why? She's worried about that separate, tep uh, temporary separation with her daughter mm. or her son. May God deliver us from it. Amen. Finally, let's take another example. When a young boy is traveling abroad for further studies, maybe to Spain, to Germany, or whatever. Thank God for the technology now. Mm -hmm. When they go in the morning, you can always check the boy. As soon as you land over there, phone. Let us know that you have had safe arrival. But it was not like that before. Yeah. Yeah. I could remember my own experience. When I was coming to study in this country, that was uh, June 28, 1962. We left Ikeja Airport. It used to be called Ikeja Airport then. Not, um, no, it was even Ikeja Aerodrome, we call it then. And you see, there was no barrier. All you could just see, just a barbed wire. No building there, no fence. So you could see the aeroplane. And when we were going inside the aeroplane, we used white handkerchief, waving to our family that we are going for. Um, go to fleece. On that very day, something spectacular happened. Immediately, our plane, our aircraft, taxi, and took off. My mom burst into tears. Ah, it was like this. And you can trust this journalist. <laughs> they put, my mom was the front page of the 
reposed that day. They put on top of her the kind mother. And at the bottom of it, they said, the kind mother could not but weeping. When the plane taking her son to the United Kingdom took off. Now, these are just few areas of separation. As good as they are, we don't want them. So if that is the case with temporary separation, you could imagine the gravity of permanent separation. May we not experience it. Few examples of permanent separations. You know, fast fetch, you have Judas Iscariot already there. You have King Saul. You have lost wife. You have the rich man in hell. May we not be there. Amen. I mean, these are things that we imagine, but we don't most of the time sit down and ponder over them. These people, they are there already. No, no hope again for them. Mm -hmm. So that the same thing will not happen to us. Yes. This is why God is talking to our ears. Yeah. 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 In Isaiah 66, part of part, uh, verse 2, he said, For to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit, and trembled at my word. I pray that as this message is coming, the enabling to understand and the tremble yeah. may God give us. Yeah. Because it's not a loving matter. No. Many at times we have messages that are very interesting that we want to hear. And occasionally, yeah. messages we don't want to hear will come. God has a purpose. Yes. Yeah. I said God has a purpose. Yes. Now we want to see Genesis chapter 6. I'm reading verses 5 to 8. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Seven. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repented, that, it repented me that I have made them. Verse 8. But Noah found grace Amen. in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. May God help you to find Amen. grace. This righteous preacher of the world yeah. Yeah. preached for good 120 years, just like the lesson we are talking about today. It takes endurance and perseverance mm. for someone to be preaching, particularly when people are not even interested, when they are not listening. If you talk to people, you invite people, and they are interested, it, it gives you a joy. Yeah. But you tell them that before you even talk about the gospel, they are not, they are not even ready to get your paper, which you want to give them free. Mm -hmm. So this man, for good 120 years, was preaching and constructing the act. Was preaching and constructing the act. Is that not the same thing? Some in our midst, they are working day and night, constructing the act of their salvation for themselves, for their family, mm -hmm. to be sure that when this great event, mm -hmm. which is called rapture, mm -hmm. takes place, they want to see Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, we still have some people who couldn't care. Yeah. May God deliver us. Yeah. Yeah. They will not tell you they don't, they don't care, but from the attitude, yeah. you know that they couldn't care. You see people praying through to salvation, sanctification, baptism, Holy Ghost, and fire, meditating, coming to services, midweek, prayer meeting. They don't want to meet unless there's something serious. But here we are. Some of us couldn't just be bothered. We do the few that is convenient for us. May God deliver us. Amen. We don't want to wait until it is too late. Because 
as I've said, there's no second chance. Is it the time for us to continue to grow and be quarreling? Is it the time that we should keep malice? Is it the time we should be fighting? May God deliver us. Amen. And if there is something for you to say to, it will be too late. Because they have been saying it many years. One day it will come to pass. We had so many prophecies that a young boy, a miraculous boy, is going to be born through a virgin, and it looks unreasonable. But one day it came to pass. Yeah. If that can come to pass, what we are saying is as simple as ABC. Yeah. It will definitely come to pass. Yeah. And that's why we need to be ready. Right. And that's the why the topic we are discussing, the torment of eternal separation. May you not experience it. Yeah. Now, we continue um, and let us know that we cannot but make sure that we rect make restitutions of our life, wherever it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Many people don't even think about restitutions anymore. Mm -hmm. It's in theory. Yeah. A whole week, we go by. A whole month, we go by. Probably two, three months, people don't even make restitutions. And it's one of the doctrines of this church. That's why we are peculiar. You remember, Somebody with whom you have an odd. Not necessarily that he, he offended you or you offended the person, but you just, it just comes to your memory that was something we never settled well. The enemy of our soul will not want you to talk about it again. But for somebody making, wants to make heaven, right. focusing on heaven, there's no contention in heaven, no. and we don't make restitution in heaven. If you have to make any restitution, this is the place. May God help us. Amen. As this message is coming, please make sure that whatever you have and means is done. Yeah. Let us turn to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter three. Let's read three and four. Knowing this, first that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For the fathers fell, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are not saying it by word of mouth, yeah. you are saying it by your attitude. Yeah. They keep saying it, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Where is it? Over too many thousands of years. But I can assure you, Jesus is coming. Amen. And the only thing to be wise is to be ready yeah. for that coming. Mm -hmm. Don't let us be scoffers who will just be saying that Jesus is not coming again. Look, for instance, the lesson of today is another eye-opener. We are apostolic faith. But many times, we fail God in the way we exercise faith. On this narrow way, on this narrow way, the success or failure that we achieve depends on our faith, our endurance and perseverance. Right. We cannot do without it. Mm -hmm. Because who are we going to take after? Mm -hmm. We have Abraham, the father of faith. Mm -hmm. For good 25 years, he was promised a child. The child came. Before then, he had every hope that the promise would be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And when the child came again, he was God tried him. Go and sacrifice that son for me as an offering. To us, he will look stupid. Yeah. But yeah. if you want to walk with the Lord, you just have to be stupid. Yeah. Yeah. May God help us yeah. to understand what we are saying. Yes. Yes. 
If you want to take your stand all the time, you want to be right, you will not make heaven. And may God help us to make heaven. We don't want to be candidates of hell. We want to be candidates of heaven. What about Anna? Anna had faith that God was going to answer her prayer. But all along, her mate was pestering her life to the extent that she could have decided and said, look, enough of it. But she started to continue in faith and pray and pray. One day, God answered her prayer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what your problem. If your problem is one of these things we are mentioning, please take heart yeah. and believe in God. Yes. That the, look at that Syrophoenician woman, woman. Yeah. with everything to discourage her. She took a stand yeah. that I've been at the source of fainting, and I will get what I want. Yeah. And she got it. Yeah. If we do the same thing, God will not disappoint us. Amen. I say God will not disappoint Amen. us. Amen. I've mentioned the case of um, Noah, who stayed for good 120 years, and she got what she wanted. In Hebrew 11, 6, he said, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever comes to the Lord must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. Now, we want to work with the Lord, and we must be able to persevere. Amen. Many times we go to God. We want something from God. Before you ask, you get an answer. Mm -hmm. But it's not always the time you get it like that. I tell you a testimony of one Abraham in South Africa, not the same Abraham of faith. She was doing fine. She was praying. She not, um, he knows how to pray to God. He was calling on God to help him in his business. And God directed him to buy a plot of land for cultivation. He bought that land. He could see that things are not growing well. God, who had given him that vision, he could have go back, gone back to that God and continue to persist. Mm -hmm. But what did he do? He decided to sell the land. He gave up the land to another person, to a neighbor, who bought it cheaply from him. And before long, before long, the person who bought the land discovered that there was gold under that land. And this is what would have been the gain for that Abraham. This was a case in South Africa. I read about it and said, sorry. I mean, many of us, many a time, because we cannot persevere, we cannot endure. Oh, we feel enough of it, enough is enough. May God help us. Amen. We want to continue in Amen. faith, and we know God is going to continue to help us. Amen. As it is often said, weeping may endure for a night. Yes. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis 19, I'm reading 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up! Get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that was mocked unto his son's in law. That's another case of eternal separation. I mean, you see, many times people have opportunity to escape. <coughs> but because of one reason or the other, they prefer to stay and say, no, nothing will happen. Ah, uh, I'm sure the sons in law will say, Oh, this papa old school. We know what we are doing. Nothing will happen. Leave us alone. This city that is full of enjoyment here and there. You have gay, you have lesbian, you have adultery, even everything booming. And you're telling us to leave the contract and anybody leave that country. May God open your spiritual eyes. Amen. We just have to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to know that we're only passing by. Yeah. 
Yes. We are not for this world. No. This is not our place. No. They mock. No, it's, nothing is going to happen. Mm. And if you're one of the mockers, yeah. feeling that nothing will happen, I tell you, the day will happen, it will be too late. Mm. As I used to say to one of my sons, I said, look, don't speed too much. Mm. Because the irony is that when accident happens and claims that person's life, it doesn't know what's happening again. It's only people behind will not be mourning, will bring one another. But that person who has had the accident is gone. Yeah, I wish in many occasions when people have serious accidents, they are able to see again what happened to them. Mm. Then they will be cautious. I had one nasty accident at Waterloo, 1969. Right. Right. We went to discover the exam, uh, examination you know, the papers before ex exam date. And as I was coming back, in full speed, I was looking at the time, time. My wife would have been at home waiting for me. When I got to that crossroads at Waterloo, it was head on collision. Bwah! All I could remember was just good God. When we were, they were taking us to the hospital, you know the alarm, if you say, wana, 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 I was just hearing it. <laughs> you know, occasionally, because I was no longer here. But I thank God Amen. that I'm still alive today. Amen. So when anybody is feeding us, I tell look, my friend, take it easy. Because I've had the experience before. Because many of us have not had the experience of what we are talking about. That's why we don't think this life, we need to take it easy. Yeah. And may God help us to take it easy. Amen. May God help us to take it Amen. easy. In Luke 16, Gospel according to St. Luke, 16. We just read a few verses. We already had it in the scripture reading. Let's look at 22 to 25. 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and saith Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest receive thy good things, and likewise Lazarus received evil, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Yeah. Now, again, this place we've just read, we are all familiar with it. There are two lessons I just want to bring out. The first lesson is that people say it, when we leave this world, we go to heaven, we know ourselves. Yeah. You might be doubting, is it possible? We will know ourselves. Yeah. This is a typical example. Yeah. The rich man knew Lazarus very well. Yeah and was able to even recognize Abraham. So, let's be careful. Whatever is happening, it's not forever. It's for a period. Amen. And may God help us. Amen. The second lesson that we want to learn again is that it is often said that wherever the tree lies, the tree falls, theirs is your lie. It will be there forever. If we are saved, and we remain saved. Come what me. Yeah. We have nothing to lose. Yeah. But if we are not saved, it is then we have problem. Mm -hmm. Because if the rapture takes place, mm. huh, when it's going to happen, we don't know. Mm. It may be worse. We are in the church like this. Mm. Some people are sleeping. Those people who are sleeping, the commotion 
The terrible thing is, will not be as many as those people who are now walk, who are alive, who are not sleeping. Because if the pilot of an aeroplane okay. is saved right. and is going to heaven, okay. it's out of that aeroplane. And the next thing is that the aeroplane will just come down. So many vehicles on the road, buses, trailers, trucks. But as long as the drivers are saved, you just find that. They, Oh, you're going to be a serious thing. Right. Oh, may God help us. Amen. We don't want to be candidates of that occasion. No. And God is ready to help us. Amen. To make sure that we make heaven. Amen. Um, another short testimony about a rich man. This time, it's a rich man with two beggars. May God help us to have good faith. Amen. You know, the two beggars... They are usually in front of the rich man, and they have a certain saying. If the rich man bless you, you'll be blessed. That's the, the message of one. The other one says, if God bless you, you'll be blessed. And gradually, this thing becomes like a discussion between them, and you go to the knowledge of the rich man. So one of the servants took it to the rich man. You know what these two people, beggars say outside there? One says, if the rich man bless you, you will be blessed indeed. But if God, the other one keeps saying, if God bless you, you will be blessed indeed. And the man said, yes, I know what I'm going to do. Find out for me their date of birth. When they have bad day, I'm going to give them present. Then, incidentally, the two of them, they have their bad day the same month, but not the same day. Then the rich man, you know, people in the world, they are very clever. He wanted to prove, to confirm that if the rich man bless you, you will be blessed indeed. He went to arrange cake, birthday cake for the two of them. He told them, create holes in one of them, but make the other one to be very heavy. Then he went to put diamond in that other one which he wanted to give to the man who keeps saying, if the rich man can bless you, you will be blessed indeed. He didn't do it around so that they would not have knowledge. So he went to do it somewhere far away. Then he just told, sent his message, uh, one of his uh, servants, go and tell them tomorrow, before they go, they should wait. He wants to give them present for their bad day that is coming very soon. The one with gold, the diamond, sorry, he gave to the man who normally says, if the rich man bless you, you will be blessed indeed. And gave the other one to the other man. No sooner he left, our God is wonderful. The man that got the one with gold was grumbling. What's wrong with this man? I was expecting he was going to give me fantastic money. What, what am I going to do with cake? I don't need cake. <laughs> then the other one says, if you don't need the cake, I'll buy it from you. Mm. He said, please, bring money. Yeah. He sold that cake. Mm. Then the two of them went home that day. Oh, yes. At home, this one who got the two, the first one they opened was the one with diamond. Oh. Wow. Right. Bless you. Said, oh, I know, if God bless you, You'll be blessed indeed. May God bless us today. Amen. So the following morning, the man came to the office and saw the same man to whom the one with God, that diamond was given. He said, Where's your friend? He said, It doesn't seem to be. Ah. He now believed that if God bless you, you'll be blessed indeed. Oh, may God help us to understand Amen. that it's only God who can bless us. And that we'll be blessed indeed. You know, Jesus gave us so many accounts of this eternal separation. We will not have time to go through them. Remember the story of the tires and the wheat. It's again the same thing, that the time is coming. Allow them to grow together. In our midst like this, they are growing together. Yeah. We do everything together. Yeah. We worship together. We pray together, but we have different de de determinations. Mm. The destination is the most important. Yeah. Are you one of the candidates for heaven? 
or candidate for her. May we not be candidate for her. Amen. This was also in one of these parables. He told us about the ten virgins. You know the story of ten virgins. Five foolish, five wise. May you not be foolish. Amen. May we not be foolish. Amen. They knew the requirement of the Lord that they just have to be ready. Amen. But they were ready halfway. Um, Sunday uh, Bible study next week, I won't have time. He already knows that he's not having time. Not even that Wednesday before he realized that ah, today, God help me, I cannot go because of this, because of that. But a week ahead, he knows he's not having time. May God deliver us. Amen. We want to focus. Amen. And this is the purpose, and this is what makes apostolic faith thick, different from others. We don't come here to listen to tales. No. We come to listen to what can make us qualified. Yes. So that on that glorious day, we will be there. Amen. May God make us to be there. Amen. May God make us to be there. Amen. We go back to Second Peter. Before the Second Peter, before Second Peter, let us first of all read Matthew 24. <laughs> Matthew 24. I'll read 36 to 41. Matthew 24. 36. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah, which I also, so shall I. Also, the coming of the Son of, of Man be, 30, 38. For as in the days of Noah, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 39. I knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 40. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. May you be qualified to be taken. Amen. 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. This is going to be the experience at that day. Two people will be doing the same thing, but one will be taken, the other one will be left. We have got enough account of this rapture that in all honesty, there should be nobody left behind, not in apostolic faith. But Paul actually prayed that under percent rapture. Amen. He's, he, he bargained with God, and I'm sure God is going to answer that prayer. Amen. That we are going to have hundred percent rapture. Amen. So it's in, up to individuals. If you know you still have anything to sort out with God, please, before it is too late. Now, finally, before we go and pray, let's see Second Peter. Second Peter chapter three, verse eleven. Seeing them that seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversations and godliness? What is I'm waiting for? We want to go and talk to God. We don't want to experience the torment of eternal separation. God will give us the grace if we pray. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity for us today to reconsider our lives, to be sure that we are ready for that great day that is coming. Lord, as we gather around these altars or wherever, we are kneeling down to call upon your name, asking you to please look into our lives and remove any obstacle. Remove all sins. Amen. Remove all impurities. Amen. All unrighteousness. Amen. Father, qualify us for heaven. Amen. We want to leave this place rejoicing, Amen. knowing that our names are written in the book in heaven, Amen. so that on that day, we will make it with Amen. other saints all around the world. Amen. Do this for us and much more. Amen. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.